What's the problem there, Seth? Oh, I see. You have this dope model all ready to go to production, and peeps be all up in your grill about the drawing. We understand why you're tripping, yo. Some fool forgot to fill out his eye properties, and that's whack. Now you have to double up on manual input to get these props filled out in the drawing, right? Well, sit back and let Rob Cohe tell you about automating this shizzle. All right. What's up, everybody? This is Rob Cohe, technical evangelist for Autodesk Manufacturing. I feel like starting off going, what, what? Here it comes. All right, hey, what I'm gonna talk about today is uh, using some automation technology that's built into Inventor 2011. It's it's the functionality that we uh, we incorporated in from our previous subscription release called iLogic. As so you've heard me talk a little bit about it, so let's, let's, let's put this thing to test. So what if I wanted, to, every time I start a new part, to have it prompt me for a title or a part number? So let's figure out how to do that. So what I've done is I've turned on my rules browser. And I'm going to go ahead and create an external rule here. And it's really, really crazy simple to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to look for my eye properties here. And the eye property that I'm looking for is called title. Now I need to, once I go into iLogic here, I need to make a statement. So the term title is going to equal the eye properties value of the summary tab, the value title. And what I want to say here is if the title equals quote quote which means if it's blank then something needs to happen I want inventor to prompt me or the user rather for the title so here I'll go in and say all right let's let's type in the prompt so the title equals input box is gonna pop up and it's gonna say please enter the I property for the title and the reason that's so important is as you saw right at the beginning was maybe you have your title blocks automatically linked to your models and if people are making drawings of your models you expect those two things to line up and they don't you're gonna get frustrated like my man Seth did right at the outset of the video uh, I have way too much fun setting up these videos but either way here's what we're gonna do so you can see that the string that I've typed out there and I'm gonna say you know it's the I properties check is your title filled out and it probably isn't if this dialog box came up so then I need to I need to do one more thing and so I, I've defined what title is and then uh, I go through and tell it grab the value from this input box and now the I property value which was previously blank um, is going to be filled out now I, I forgot to end the if statement so I logic tells me you know hey you non programming hack uh, you didn't do your job correctly and no I didn't so I need to put in if so now you can see as soon as I hit go, it executes the command and it says, hey dude, what's your, um, what's your title? And I go ahead and type in widget and there it goes. So in that example, it, it, it filled it in great, exactly what I wanted to do, but I deleted it because what I want to do is I want to set up some event triggers as part of this file that's ultimately going to be my template file. So I'll say new event trigger and every time I start a new document, I want that thing to pop up or every time I save it and it's still empty if somebody cancels out for example I want it to pop up so here I'm going through the saving process it saw that it was empty and it said you know why are you tripping uh, your stuff's still empty so let's go ahead and put a different value in there just to show you the difference here and bring up the I properties again and there we go it's all in there now another commonly used one is going to be uh, part number. Now by default part number with Inventor is automatically set to your file name and you may or may not want that to be the case. So let it set up a rule that uh, for part numbers and make sure that A the part number is filled out but B it's not set to the file name. Okay, um, If you want to do that. So I've kind of skipped ahead a little bit because setting this up is the same. So if part number equals blank here's where it's new or part number equals I don't know let's figure it out here file name from the document properties I want something to occur I want the dialog box to come up and prompt the user for the part number so what I'm telling 
inventor here is every time I save a file, which is that's going to be one of my event triggers for this rule, and it finds that the part number is either empty or it's equal to the file name to prompt me yet again for what this value needs to be. And it's yes, I fast forwarded there, but it's 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 essentially the same thing that I did in the last example. Plus, you have the ability to do pause and rewind. Uh, and I'm also going to upload these snippets up to my blog so that you can download them. All right, so let's take a look at what happened. Um, I, I executed the uh, the, uh, the rule. It immediately fired off and said, hey, what's your part number? I typed one in, check out the part numbers. Now I want to go ahead and associate this to an event trigger. Now, as I was recording the example, I forgot that I did another one. So just ignore th uh, the man behind the curtain here. <laughs> and only have the uh, the rules fire off for specific events that you want. Pretty cut and dry, right? So now when I hit uh, save, it says, hey, enter the title. The title was blank. I go ahead and hit OK. And it also notices that the part number is blank. I'll go ahead and type that in. Double check to see what's going on. Sure enough, the part number's in there. My description's in there. Now, what if... Um, I want to go ahead and test out to make sure that what, what happens when the, when, the, uh, when the part number is set to the file name. This file name is part 6. I'm going to go ahead and remove the part number, change it to a, a name, and it recognizes that, hey, dude, you, you got part 3 or whatever this is. Uh, please put in the appropriate part number, and I did so. So like that, um, it's uh, really, really wicked easy to make sure that people are putting in their stuff. Now, if you want to have a little bit of fun with this, 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 is, the, uh, this is the extra bonus feature. This, this is kind of fun. Um, you can actually call up the Windows voice prompt to have it speak to you if you screw it up. So for example, here, if it's saying uh, you, know, you didn't put in any of the properties, let's go ahead and call up the... Uh, the uh, sapi.voice and have it say something to the user. So this is kind of fun and we'll, and we'll get a little example of that. So I'm going to have it say <clears throat> you are a tool of the first order for not complying to the rules. <laughs> oh, let's also have it say uh, you know, Rob Kohi uh, he kicks some serious booty. See what that says. We go and execute the command. <laughs> Let's listen. Required high property values need to be filled out. You are a tool of the first order for not complying. Robco here kicks some serious booty. Yeah. Nothing better than that, guys. <laughs> So if you're tired of repeating the same tasks over and over again or trying to get people to adhere to certain standards, there's some built-in functionality right inside of Inventor 2011 that will give them the proverbial slap across the face, back of the head, or even tell them that they're falling behind with some of the voiceover stuff we just showed you. Uh, more iLogic uh, fun to, uh, to come. Take it easy, guys. Make money, money. Make money, money.